as a, as a young boy at the age of six, I get a, a rude awakening. You know, my sister comes to my room, wakes me up to let me know that my father was just killed in a car accident. I would look around and see all the other boys playing sports with their dad or playing catch. And I would ask myself, if there's really a God, then why would he take my dad? You know, my mom was a strong black woman who worked hard every day. And if she told you how to do something, you did it. Every Sunday, my mom would make me go to church whether I wanted to or not. I had to wear, you know, dress slacks, tie, shoes. We sat up front. I didn't really believe in God. I went because my mom told me I had to go. There was no, I'm not going. There was no, I'll go next time. It was what she said went, and that was just it. I remember my dad telling me that no matter what happens, always take care of your mom and your sisters. So I started doing what I needed to do, newspaper routes, cutting grass, doing things extra, just to try to bring extra means of money into the house. So it was me and four of my sisters. I have two sisters with kids, and one of my sisters has a drug addiction. So I felt like I needed to help my family out the best way I can, as fast as I can. And selling drugs, it was fast money, it was easy. I would take my allowance and, you know, things I would do around the neighborhood to go buy drugs. And then once I got the drugs, I would just sell them to make sure that my family was taken care of. I just thought selling drugs was normal because I seen it every day. I seen people going back and forth to work, but I seen more drug dealers than I seen people going to work. My mom worked two jobs. My mom would work from 11 to 7 and then 7 to 3. So my mom had no idea I was selling drugs. And uh, at 14, it was, I didn't have to fill out an application or anything. Only application I had to fill out was how much money you had, that's how, many, that's how much drugs you can buy. I played football for my middle school. I played football for my high school. I played basketball for my middle school. I played basketball for my high school. As long as I was playing sports, I was okay. But it's like when sports was over, I really wasn't. I would sell drugs to, pro to provide for my family. When it came to sports, that's the only time I ever felt peace. But that's the only time I felt connected to my dad is like when I was on the football field or basketball court. I was depressed that he wasn't there, but I felt like this is how we connected. So the one guy I ran into was like, he was like a cousin to me, but he did things differently. So he came up with this plan to rob somebody. My mind was, I'm not robbing anybody, but it was a robbery that went wrong, basically. I went back and I apologized to the people that we robbed. And then when my cousin, got in trouble, he said that I'm the one who planned the robbery. So at 17, I was charged as an adult. Instead of me going to like Juvie or Glen Mills, they sent me straight to Montgomery County. I see everybody like the twice my size. I had to fight to show them like, you're not taking anything from me. That's not how it's gonna be. So at 17, I'm fighting grown men. If there's a God, why is all this happening to me? I did nine months in Montgomery County. And then I came home with a five-year probation tell while I was still in high school. I went back to high school after I came home. And you know, they used my criminal record to say why I shouldn't be allowed to play sports in their school. I never knew that was possible. I never knew that could happen, but it did. Like everything I ever thought I could do, they wouldn't allow me to do. I went to a, a party, everybody's drinking, Things get a little bit out of control. I end up getting a little bit of trouble at the party. But that trouble that I, that I got myself into ended up costing me five years of my life in state prison. So now I'm back in prison and I figure, this is my life. Everything just felt dark to me. And, I just, and that's how I just walked through life. I just walked through life like it was just a dark cloud. So if everything's gonna be dark, I'm gonna be dark. From my early 20s, going into my early 30s now, I just, and in, in prison. When I was serving my last four to eight sentence, I started doing some things that, you know, I never did before because my way wasn't working. So I started reading like, you know, Proverbs and there are certain things about Proverbs that remind me of my dad growing up and remind me of my mom, watching the things that my mom went through and remembering what the things that my dad told me. So, when I came home, I didn't stop. I read the daily bread every day before I went to work. And I felt that, you know, when I didn't read it, my day was kind of off. And then I guess upon reading the daily bread and trying to do things differently, 
is how I met my wife. And she's just always telling me that no matter what you did in your life, there's always, you could always be better. There's something better for you. I said, there ain't nothing better for me. I said, I don't believe in anything better. She is like, believe me, there's, there's more to life than what you have seen. She had two kids. And I remember the first time I met them, we were playing and we were just having a ball, you know. Her kids had asked me if they can call me dad because I remind them of their dad. And I know it's like not to have a dad. I said, if this is what life can be like, then it might be something better. But this is when I started to change my thinking about God because he put a beautiful woman in my life and told me that things can be different. The first time I ever came to LCBC was with my wife. Just from the very first time they started singing to I say the word of the, to the to the word, it was a very comfortable feeling, and I felt like this is something that I could do. LCBC made me feel like the light that God had shined on me was always there. I just didn't see it. It was me looking through my own eyes and not through the eyes of God. So I gave my life over to Jesus. I surrendered my life ever since then. Everything that happened in my past has been washed away and now given a second chance at life. And now that I have a chance to have an eternal life with God, I believe it's going, it's going to be a truly a blessing to sit with my dad one day and it's going to be a good conversation. My name is Cornelius McCray Jr. My life has been changed by Christ.